In between came the interlude of Adolf Hitler, <coughs> which speeded up the movement of the Jews from Europe to the Holy Land. In 1948, Britain did something strangest of all. Britain is a state with a tremendous commitment to the rule of law. And so every time Britain decolonized, there was always an insistence of a legal transfer of power. And then you had the flags going up at midnight, huh? and the national anthem and this constitution and so on, a legal transfer of power. It happened in Trinidad as well. But in 1948, when Britain left the Holy Land, she left like a thief in the dark. For the first time, for the only time in British history, there was no legal transfer of power from Britain to the successor state. In 1948, Britain acted as the midwife for the baby to be born. The European Jewish state of Israel. And so my answer is that that island of Tamimudari is Britain. <coughs> the Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam about Dajjal. That he would ride on a donkey. And the donkey would travel as fast as the clouds. And the donkey would have his ears stretched out wide. My opinion, which I hope you will share with me, is that that donkey is already here in the world. This is religious symbolism with which we began the lecture. The donkey is the modern aircraft. And since the Antichrist brings with him the modern aircraft, the Antichrist commands the skies. You can't, you cannot compete with him or rival him in power in the skies above. He said that the Antichrist will step into the ocean and the water would reach him up to his knee. Again, I want to suggest to you that we are dealing with religious symbolism here. It is not to be understood literally as a donkey. It is not to be understood literally as a man who is a few miles tall. Rather, it is the technology which allows you to go down to the bottom of the ocean and pick up pieces of an aircraft which crashed and reassemble the aircraft 95%. That technology is in the world today. The Antichrist would be jumping about between the heavens and the earth. Jumping about, said the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Again, I want to suggest to you that this is not to be interpreted literally, that we are dealing with religious symbolism. It refers to our modern exploration of the heavens above. 
the satellites that go around the earth and the shuttle aircrafts that go up and down. In fact, <coughs> in all of these we see pointers towards a scientific and technological revolution which would sweep the world and the mastermind behind that scientific and technological revolution is the Antichrist. He said that the earth, the earth would yield, the earth would yield its treasures to the job. Now, go back home and study British history as I am doing now and you would see that the scientific and technological revolution was led by the island of Britain at every significant step of the way the earth would eat its treasures to the jail last year <coughs> my wife and I visited the city of Kimberley in South Africa. Kimberley is famous for its diamonds, the Kimberley diamonds. Somewhere around the middle of the 19th century, a little African child was playing and discovered a stone that was sparkling. The child took the stone back to his father. The father took the stone to the European commissioner. The European commissioner sent the stone to Johannesburg. And when they examined the stone, they found that it was one of the biggest diamonds that had ever been discovered. And that was this, the trigger that now led to the exploration for diamond and gold <coughs> in southern Africa. But it was British technology at work to discover the diamond veins down deep down in the earth. Without that British technology, you could not have done it. And then they began to dig these huge man-made holes. And in Kimberley, we saw the biggest one of all. My wife and I st stood at, the, at the, the edge of this big hole, big hole. You could put a couple aircraft down inside there. And way down at the bottom of the hole, way down deep inside the earth, they went and they mined the diamonds. Out of that Kimberley diamond mine, they extracted, you know, a wheelbarrow? Well, there were five wheelbarrows at the side of the mine there, and they were filled with plastic nuggets. And this was meant to show us how many diamonds were mined at Kimberley before the mine was closed down in 1914. All of that effort of digging this big, 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 big hole in order to get five wheelbarrows filled of diamonds. In 1914, the stage was set. The Zionist movement had taken control of the diamond mines of South Africa and used a man named Cecil John Rhodes as a front man. The Rothschild Bank of Europe, a Jewish bank, financed him and they were able to get to harvest all those diamonds and then use the sale of those diamonds to build up a war chest 